comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. If there's one piece of furniture that you are most likely to find in most households, it would be the big, squashy, elongated chair slash bench that 9 out of 10 times faces towards the television. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's the big thing the Simpsons sit at the start of every episode to varying degrees of success, or the big thing you hide behind as a kid when Cybermen appear on the telly. So why am I not saying its name? Well. Here's the thing, while we all know what exactly I'm talking about, we don't all seem to agree on what exactly this thing is actually called. This piece of furniture has gone under a huge variety of names across the globe, which unto itself isn't too surprising. Most things have different names in different languages, but what's interesting here is that not only does this have different names in different languages, but even has different names within the same language, English in the case of this video, and beyond this these different names are locked away to different versions of the same language. Like, this isn't even a case of something having a different name in British English and American English. This thing even has different names in its own single subset of English. Let's stop beating around the bush about this, however, shall we, and just say the darn thing's name. The three most popular names in the English speaking world that these elongated benches go by are sofas, couches, and settees. But even beyond these three names, there are tons more. How? out of everything across the globe, has this long, squishy bench that we park our butts up on ended up with so many names. The only thing that we sit on that has more names than this that I can think of is the toilet. Thankfully, however, the variety of names and the acts of sitting on them are the only elements that these two things have in common. One of the main reasons why sofas, which is my go-to name for them and the name I'll be using to refer to them most of the time during this video unless otherwise stated, have so many names, is because they have been around around for a seriously long time. This might sound a bit strange. When we think of antiquity, we don't really think of people lounging around sitting on sofas, but they do in one form or another and have a very ancient history. Like, seriously, what did they even point at before the invention of the television? The ancient Egyptians were skilled upholsterers, and proto-sofa type things were found within the tomb of Tutankhamun. As time went on, the Romans continued to make long, padded benches too. It would take some time, however, for sofas to take the shape we see them as today. It seems that they really came into their element around the 16th and 17th century AD, and from there, we have never really looked back. The sofa throughout history hasn't taken just one single form however. Over the years a huge variety of different kinds of sofas with slightly different designs and features have come into existence. These variations of sofas help us explain why there are so many different names that we use for the modern sofa. Initially, these different names for sofas actually referred to different variations of sofa. Over time, however, these words started to lose their specific meaning relating to a specific kind of sofa and instead started to be used interchangeably with one another to refer to any sofa, regardless of specific style. However, it's worth noting that there are actually still certain names that are still heavily linked to a specific design of sofa, some of which we'll highlight in a moment. But by and large, if it's long, comfy, and has a back and arms, you can call it a couch, or a sofa, or a city, and no one will really bat an eyelid. While that might be the case now, it wasn't always the case. Once upon a time, the names of sofa, couch, and city referred to specific kinds of upholstered benches, and I'm sure if you're asking the right kinds of people, e.g. sofa makers, interior designers, or general smarty pants, they would insist that the correct name still be used to this day for the correct kind of sofa. Though, as I've said in the past, language cannot be dictated by what people demand of it. People can proclaim a certain thing must be referred to by a certain name, but if the masses don't use that name and refer to it as something else, then that demanded official name means pretty much jack squat. Anyway, in regards to what kinds of furniture these names initially apply to, it seems the one that fits the bill for our modern concept of a sofa is the design that was initially designated as a sofa. Traditionally, an upholstered bench with arms and a back was called a sofa. Like I said, this is the one closest to our modern concept of them. Sofa is actually a word borrowed from the Turkish language. That's kind of interesting, as another kind of sofa slash piece of furniture has a name of more literal Turkish roots too, as we shall see. 
Turkish got this word from Arabic, with the Arabic word of Sufar slash Sofa, which I have read means things ranging from a bench of stone or wood, to a part of the floor raised a feet or two, covered with cushions and carpets to sit on, to it simply meaning wool. While these are somewhat different in meaning, they all relate to the idea of a sofa being somewhere to sit and relax. Sofa seems to have become the most popular term for these comfy boys here in the UK, hence why it's my go-to term for them, though you will hear other terms for them too, one of those being couch. While you may hear couch here in the UK, it is by and large way more popular in the USA. In fact, in the United States, couch is perhaps the most popular term for this piece of furniture. The Simpsons intros are literally called couch gags. Though, what's interesting is that initially, couches weren't that similar to modern couches at all. The name of couch initially referred to a long upholstered bench with arms slash supports at both ends. What really differentiated it, however, was the fact that they had no back support. They were more akin to benches and made more for sleeping on than sitting on it would seem. The original design of the couch is reflected in the etymology of this word couch too, as it comes from the French coucher, meaning to lie down, which ties in nicely with the fact that traditionally couches had no back support to sit comfortably with them, so the comfiest thing to do on them was to lie down. Despite the fact we don't really use couch here in the UK, it's a term I actually really enjoy for them. Couch has a very comfortable sound to it. It almost feels onomatopoeic in some strange way, maybe because couch sounds so much like slouch, which is something people do quite often on couches. And while we don't use couch here in the UK, we still use it in the phrase couch potato. We don't say sofa potato. This phrase is of course of US creation, coming into being in the late 70s, when one Tom Lacino referred to his friend as one spontaneously without too much thought. Another friend of his was a comic book artist called Bob Armstrong, and it was he who ran with the term and made it the household phrase that it is today. SETI is a bit more of a unique one however. While I've heard it used here in the UK, it's nowhere near as popular as sofa. I read that this term is a more old fashioned term for sofas, perhaps used by people of an older generation here in the UK. I also read that it's pretty much non-existent in the USA, so let me know if that's actually the case down below. The reason this name is so distinctly UK based is because it's a word of old English roots, believed to come from the old English name of settle or settle. Initially a settle was a long non-upholstered wooden bench. Once these benches got comfier however with cushions and padding, that name stuck around, and settle adapted into settee. What's really interesting in this case however is that this old English name of settle for these benches still lives on to this day in the form of the verb settle. To settle means to calm down slash come to a rest and it comes directly from these old English benches as it would be on a settle where one would go to calm down slash rest. People would literally settle on a settle. So while very few people would ever call a sofa or any kind of bench a settle now in the UK or otherwise, that verb of settle is still very much alive and well. I've said settle too many times and it feels a bit weird. I need to go settle down myself or something I think. As these three different kinds of upholstered benches changed, the unique names for them all started to become interchangeable. Though something really interesting happened with these words in the 1950s. This was when English author and socialite Nancy Mitford wrote her guide to the correct words and languages the upper classes should use. She referred to this concept as you and non-you, with you meaning the upper class and non-you meaning the aspiring middle classes. During her findings and writings, she she said that more often than not, the upper classes and working classes use the same words, whereas the aspiring middle classes use different language, often trying to use words that make them sound more impressive and well, more middle class I suppose, hence why they are the aspiring middle class. Amongst all this, the words of sofa, couch and settee were present. Mitford said that sofa was the go-to term used by the upper classes and working classes, while couch and settee were the terms used by the aspiring middle class, ergo they were the terms that people really shouldn't be using. 
Mitford's writings sound absolutely fascinating. I had never heard of her or her work prior to researching this video, but now I want to dedicate a whole video to her. Supposedly this concept of you and non-you was actually something of a tongue-in-cheek joke about the absurdity of the class system in the UK, and what people would do to act as if they are in a certain class. But apparently not everyone realised it was a joke and took her writings very seriously. Though some argue she meant what she wrote. As I said, it's all really fascinating and could serve as a great video unto itself one day. While that's the most popular names for sofas covered, as I mentioned, there are many other kinds of sofas out there that have more unique names. Take the sofa bed an example. This is a kind of sofa that pulls out into a bed, hence the name. It's definitely not the most fun name to talk about, but it's perhaps the most commonly seen sofa variation. And besides, any sofa can be a sofa bed anyway, if you try hard enough. A more specific kind of sofa bed with a more unique name, however, has to be the futon. Futons are Japanese in origin, and while we now see the word as being the name for a more minimalist looking sofa bed, futon initially referred to the bedding system rather than any sort of sofa bed itself. Supposedly, it comes from Japanese words meaning bedroll or place to rest. And as mentioned, Turkey played a large role in the naming of the sofa. However, the former empire that resided in the nation of Turkey gave its name to a another kind of sofa slash piece of furniture, the Ottoman. Ottomans come in all shapes and sizes, but the defining feature of them is their lack of arms or a back. These were popularized in the Ottoman Empire, and when they were exported to the rest of the world, they were named after their place of origin. Similarly to Ottomans are divans, similar in shape and design and in name origin too, as divan comes from Turkish as well, initially meaning bundles of writing sheets. The name was for sheets of paper, and then it got applied to the office rooms these sheets of paper were kept in, and then it got applied to the seats that these offices had within them. Though what's interesting is that to many, the word divan is more linked with beds these days as opposed to sofas. A chaise long is a type of sofa that is very linked to the world of psychology and counselling, thanks to it being Sigmund Freud's furniture of choice. They look somewhat like modern sofas, but only have one arm, and only a small part of the back is supported. This name is French and means a long chair, because these really do look like normal chairs that have been stretched out. A love seat is the name for a very small sofa, which at times can be just slightly larger than a normal chair. Their name derives from the fact that if two people had to sit on them, they would be very close together, meaning they are more likely to be sat on by two people who love each other as opposed to strangers, as being that close and intimate with someone must imply you love them. Beyond these, however, there are still some other names that are used in English for sofas in general. These are in more specific places. A term for sofa I've never heard is a Davenport. Supposedly, Davenport is a term for sofas in general in the upper Midwest area of the USA, around the Great Lakes and such. Apparently, Davenport can refer to any kind of sofa, but it could also point to a specific kind. Someone might use Davenport to refer to just some fancy sofas or just a sofa bed. The name comes from one A.H. Davenport, a sofa maker whose name became synonymous with sofas in this part of the USA clearly. This is something known as a generic trademark, when a branded name becomes a de facto name for all those things regardless of its brand. It's something we definitely need to make a video on in the future that's for sure. Though the name that surprised me the most for sofas was Chesterfield. This is a term I'd never heard before for sofas, but the internet was telling me that this is a pretty popular name for them. The wiki page for couches even has it up there at the start with sofa and settee. It turns out the reason I had never heard this term is because Chesterfield is a popular common name for sofas as a whole in Canada, a part of the world I haven't had the pleasure of exploring just yet. While Chesterfield can refer to any sofa, Chesterfield was initially the name for more ornate sofas, specifically ones with tufted slash buttoned backs. This name of Chesterfield comes from one Lord Philip Stanhope, who was the fourth Earl of Chesterfield in the UK. He wanted a new exquisite kind of sofa which led to the creation of this fancy looking sofa, which bared the name of his earldom. And that's just a selection of the names that this piece of furniture has had, and I didn't really even dive into this name in other parts of the world. But I'm sure you can gather now that this piece of furniture has a ridiculous amount of names. Now go tell me what it's called in your part of the world, down below.
This video topic was suggested by Donna Lynn Pryor over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a Name Explain video and wish to enjoy Name Explain videos ad free as well as get exclusive content, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon. So a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos. $2 a month gets you all that, plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.